The Yu-Gi-Oh! Forbidden and Limited list is an excellent place to go if you're interested in learning about the history of the strongest cards in all of Yu-Gi-Oh! Even if every single card on there these days doesn't really deserve to be on there, at least at some point Konami thought the card was strong enough to put on the list. There are cards that are forbidden and limited and semi-limited, and in today's video I want to focus on the 11 banned Xyz monsters, all of which are still on the ban list to this day except for one of them which we'll talk about as we go through this list and it's also worth mentioning that of all the ban extra deck monsters in the game the vast majority of them are Xyz monsters and the vast majority of those are rank fours it's really interesting looking at the synchros and fusions and even links that are on the ban list in comparison to all of the Xyz monsters not to mention that so many of the Xyz monsters are specifically rank fours instead of any of the other ranks in the next two videos we're going to go chronologically through all 11 Xyz monsters that were on the ban list at one point and we're only going to be looking at cards that were forbidden specifically. There certainly are Xyz monsters that have been limited and semi-limited but in today's video we're only focusing on the banned ones because after all those should be the highest benchmarks for what truly makes an overpowered Xyz monster. Let's start off in March of 2013 with the very first Xyz monster ever to be banned and that is Wind Up Carrier Zen Matey. Now it's worth mentioning in the case of Zen Mady, not in the case of all of the cards on this list, but in the case of Zen Mady, this card was actually at 3 and then limited and then it was banned. Many of the cards on this list went from 3 to 0, but Zen Mady actually was seen too powerful at 3 copies per deck, it got limited and it was still too good, so Konami banned it, leading it to become the very first banned Xyz monster. Now what makes Wind Up Carrier Zen Mady so powerful? Well as a rank 3 monster, it fits right into the Wind Up strategy where you have so many powerful cards like Wind Up Rat and Wind Up Hunter. The main deal with Zen Matey though is that summoning cards from the deck, especially ones like Wind Up Rat, is just way too powerful. Even these days we see some of the most powerful Link monsters like Summon Sorceress and Isolde. They're so good because they can summon monsters straight from the deck without having to search them, without having to summon them via another card effect. In the case of Zen Matey, it was too good because of the Wind Up Hunter loop when it originally came out and limiting it did affect that loop. You couldn't really hit all the cards out of your opponent's hand anymore, but even at one copy per deck, the card was too strong simply because the wind-up cards in general were way too good for 2013 standards. This led the card to being banned, and it hasn't come off the ban list yet. Maybe someday this will come off, but with the very good wind-up link monster that we got as legacy support, it seems pretty unlikely because there could be some deadly combos featuring those two cards. On the next ban list, which was in September of 2013, you interestingly have a card that was used in part of the Wind Up Carrier Zen Mady combo, and that is number 16 Shockmaster. So there was a Wind Up deck that was very good in early 2013, and it abused Zen Mady and Shockmaster over and over again, and it was absolutely ridiculous. Even with one Zen Mady, you very easily could crank out one Shockmaster on your opening turn, which your opponent really couldn't deal with. You see, Shockmaster is very similar to the Outer Entity card that many people are complaining about these days, except all you have to do to summon this is summon three level four monsters. Oh, and also it not only negates whatever you call during your turn, but also during your opponent's turn, which is really hard for a lot of decks to deal with. You could call something like spells that your opponent couldn't use Dark Hole on you, and then when your turn rolled around, you could call traps so that they couldn't stop any of your attacks, or you could just call monster effects and your opponent probably wouldn't be able to make a board in the first place. Number 16, Shockmaster basically made every deck with level 4 monsters so much more powerful, but especially it affected the wind-up strategy because of Zen Matey turboing out Shockmaster very early on in the duel. Overall, oppressive cards like number 16 Shockmaster probably just shouldn't exist in Yu-Gi-Oh!, and I think for this reason it's very likely that the Outer Entity card that a lot of people are complaining about right now, which is also an Xyz monster, is pretty likely to end up on the ban list eventually. Another two years passed by before an Xyz monster was banned, and it was Lavalval Chain in July of 2015. Now, Lavalval Chain was one of the best rank 4 monsters to date, acting as a foolish burial for any card in your deck or stacking your deck with a monster card. And overall, it was only a matter of time before the card found its way to the Forbidden and Limitless, even specifically being banned. This card was banned for a variety of interactions, but if we're looking at July 2015 specifically, Lavalval Chain had to suffer on the ban 
Dominion list because of its interactions with Necroz. You could do so many crazy things with stacking your deck and drawing cards with Valk. You could even help do the Gin Lock when that card was legal, but overall, Levalvo Chain is simply too versatile for Yu-Gi-Oh! A card very similar to it is actually in Lynx right now, and that is Curious of the Light Sworn, and that card's pretty crazy as well in combination with Dangers. The fact of the matter is, is that when you have an easily summonable card like Levalvo Chain in the metagame, Konami has to be very careful with which cards they release because they always know no matter what cards they put out, Levalvo Chain can always instantly send them to the graveyard, and that definitely limits card design. So I think this card will likely be on the ban list forever, if not a very, very long time. Maybe eventually 10 years from now and the game's completely changed, maybe Levalvo Chain won't be good enough. But at least for the time being, it would still probably see play if it was around even in 2019. Flash forward a few months months to November of 2015 and we find yet another rank 4 monster ban and that is Evil Swarm Exiton Knight. Now this card is the only card on this list that is currently not banned still. It recently actually went to Unlimited which is pretty crazy to think about and this card's design isn't awful. It's not nearly as abusable as many of the other cards on this list. The whole point of Exiton Knight is to create huge comebacks but the problem was is that back in November of 2015 we simply did not have nearly as many counters to this card. This was back when the most common hand traps were Max C and maybe Effect Failure and DD Crow. We didn't have a lot of cards that you would just keep in your hand, which meant for most players, especially the players playing slower strategies, you would just put all of your cards on the field. Things like Bottomless Trap Hole and Trenchal Tribute and Mere Force and Dimensional Prison. And Evil from Exiton Knight was extremely capable of just ripping through those boards. Very similar to a card like Evenly Match, oftentimes with Exiton Knight, you would minus yourself, summon it, blow up the entire board, and then continue on your plays and still come out ahead. However, the reason this card is allowed to be at three copies per deck right now is because not many people are playing cards like Exiton Knight anymore. It is very good and it still is cool to have that comeback mechanic. However, it's much easier to use a card like Evenly Match or Red Reboot to blow through a bunch of back row at once instead of having to summon two level four monsters and summon the Exiton Knight. I think one of the biggest reasons to not play this card anymore is that most of the decks that you're using using this card or that you would be using this card against are going to have tons of effect negation. Things like Altergeist are going to have Solemns like Solemn Warning and Solemn Strike as well as Altergeist Protocol. There are just way too many counters for Exiton Knight out there, not to mention because so many people are playing hand traps, oftentimes they don't just put all of their cards on the field, they have a bunch of cards in hand left over too, so Exiton Knight doesn't really help you get rid of the cards in your opponent's hand. Teller Knight Ptolemaeus has way more text than any of the cards we've talked about on this list, but it was pretty much only used for one specific format with one specific combo, and it mostly ignores the text on the card. All you need to know is that you would summon this card using three level four monsters, and then detach all those materials to rank up into Cyber Dragon Infinity and secure your board. Now this might not sound that good, especially by 2019 standards, pretty much every deck out there has some form of negation, however this was extremely good at securing your field when you're playing the Pepe deck that was only legal for about one month. This was just one of the many cards that got hit on that emergency adjusted ban list and it definitely helped players actually deal with the pendulum mechanic because pendulums they're very powerful when used in the right decks and the Pepe deck at full power is one of the most oppressive strategies in all of Yu-Gi-Oh's history. It might not seem that crazy having one negation but you also often had Solemns face down and you had Trap Tricks with Fleet Oh, and also if your opponent broke your entire board, you would pendulum summon five cards and still be able to make another board on top of that. I mentioned this in the pendulum discussion video I did a few weeks ago, but basically the Pepe deck at full power was what a lot of players thought pendulums would be all the time for the two years that they were like the new mechanic. However, that wasn't true, but in the case of Pepe in combination with cards like Teller Knight Ptolemaeus, it actually was true for that one month and it was one of the worst months in Yu-Gi-Oh! history for players that didn't want to play the best deck out there. Anyway though, that's going to wrap up part one. We're halfway through the list and starting off with part two a few days from now, we're going to start talking about the 2017 Xyz monsters. There was actually three of them that were banned on the exact same ban list, which is pretty unprecedented. And then we're going to end out the series by talking about two cards that were on the most recent ban list. Yes, that's true. Even in 2018 and 2019, Xyz monsters, despite being two mechanics old now, are actually still causing havoc on competitive Yu-Gi-Oh. I'll see you guys later though. Thank you so much for watching today's video and make sure to stay tuned for part two. Goodbye.